This is Soccer with Coach Mark Davis. Had the amazing opportunity to interview Marcella Balboa today. Current Developmental Academy coach for the Colorado Rapids U18s, U19s. Uh, Marcella Balboa had a, 127 appearances for our men's national team. Was the former men's national team captain. And just an absolute great guy. Uh, I've known Marcelo Balboa since 2016. Every single time I speak to him, he has been an absolute class act. He's helped me land several big-time players from his academy program. And I hope you really enjoy this podcast. I think uh, you'll learn and get a greater respect for Marcelo Balboa and all he accomplished in his career. Hello, how you doing, man? Mark Davis. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm so good, dude. Thanks for thank you so much for ste- stepping on for this for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, no problem, man. Anytime. All right, we'll dive right into it, dude. Um, so first and foremost, this is a huge opportunity for me. Uh, my very first professional game I ever attended was in 1996 at the Rose Bowl, Rapids versus Galaxy. Uh, I was waiting at the tunnel grabbed my hand, talked to me a little bit. Ever since then, I've been a massive fan of yours, you know, watching you throughout the MLS career, 2000 goal of the year, playing in the 94 World Cup, all those things. So, you know, I just want to say thank you, and, and just this is a huge opportunity for me. Uh, man, no problem. I appreciate it. No problem at all. So tell us tell us about your opportunity right now, currently as the under-19s, under-18s developmental coach for the, for the Rapids. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it came along all of a sudden. I am the U14 DA coach, and uh, unfortunately, um, our U19 coach got released last year. They asked me to, to fill in, and uh, ever since then, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have the U19. It's been a blessing. Uh, they challenge you, but in a good way, and it makes me uh, a better coach because of the challenges that you have because you're training kids now that are hoping to be professionals in the next year to two years with homegrown, maybe going to college and coming back. So um, it, it's been it, it's been a blessing for me. What's the what's a major difference between players nowadays than from when you played? Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's there, the, the biggest. I think if you look at differences, probably technically they're they're a little better now, stronger, faster, with all of the uh, uh, sports science and the way they train them, the way they're able to check their heart monitors and see their workload. So I think the difference has been the sports science is is tremendously helped these kids. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. You know, Lexi and myself were some of the bigger guys when we played and now we would be probably average a little bit below average on height so uh, i think the fact that there that our da academies we didn't have da academies we had odp there's a lot of advantages these these young men have the usl uh league one two and three where they can play um just just a lot of little advantage but i think the the, the biggest thing is technically they're uh, they're a little better than we were back in the old day. Yeah, talk to me about uh, you know the 1994 World Cup and how special that was to play in front of your home co- country, playing the Rose Bowl against Colombia. All, all, just some of your highlights of of that tournament. Um, God, you know there was the, the whole month was a highlight. Let's be honest for us. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think the highlight. Uh, a few things is one beating Colombia. You know, no one really expected us to beat Colombia. The previous matches we've had over the last three years, we have never beat them. Uh, they they've pretty much taken it to us pretty easily. Um, that was huge, being able to beat them and get into the next round, being able to play uh, the very first game in an indoor at Detroit Stadium when we played there. Um, Again, Switzerland, that was some special. So there's a lot of little, you know, the way the way the country kind of uh, embraced us, embraced soccer, wasn't really sure 
what soccer was at that time. People were very curious to see what soccer was and what the U.S. could do because we were uh, – expectations fell really, really short in the 90 World Cup, and uh, people were curious, why the United States? Why are they hosting? They're not a soccer country. So I think just watching the way people turned – and the way people started looking at soccer here in the United States differently was was a huge plus. So talk to me about uh, your bicycle kick uh, and what that would have done for your career if that bicycle kick went in. <laughs> you know what? I couldn't tell you what it would, would have done for my <laughs> career or not. Uh, I really don't care, to be honest with you. Um, when you get an opportunity to hit a bike like that, um, you want it to go in, but to this day, to this day, I still have people walk up to me and tell me that they were there at the stadium and how close the bicycle kick. I've never seen people remember a missed goal as much as they remember that in 94. And I think more than anything, if, if it would have been a Brazilian or an Italian or somebody else, they probably would have let it go. But being an American, I think that surprised a lot of people that an American would even consider trying that at the time. So, but, uh, you know, I wish it would have gone in. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, I got it. Uh, I got it a few years later in 2000 uh, in Columbus. So I'm happy. Goal of the year. Goal of the year. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, well, maybe here's the only difference. Maybe I would have got like a Harley Davidson sponsorship. Which, so I love Harley. So maybe I would have got a bicycle that way. You know what I mean? That's about it. Amazing. Um, now, being the captain of the national team, when they when they asked you to be the captain, um, how was that for you? I mean, what what were some of your emotions? What were some of your thoughts? Um, you know, anytime you can be considered um, a leader uh, on your team and you wear the band, and, and it's an honor. It's first, it's just an honor to put on the United States jersey. And, and represent your country, but to be able to be named captain and to wear that band and know that you have the respect of your own teammates, because that's when, when we were doing it, uh, it was a coach's decision, but it was also a player's decision. So it meant a lot, because if you look at throughout the history of captains, you know, the United States had from Ricky Davis, Hugo Perez, Tony Miola, you know what I mean? You can keep going down the list. There, there's a pretty big uh, names on that list, Walter Farr, all those guys. So to be able to be put myself in that uh, in a crucial time in U.S. soccer was, was an honor. That's awesome. Thank you. Few people know this about you, but you played junior college at Cerritos College. Walk us through your junior college days and your San Diego State college days. Um, you know what? I, people, it's funny how people just remember San Diego State. Uh, I struggled. I struggled in school because of my mom and dad came to this country from Argentina. We spoke Spanish. Everybody spoke English. So it took me a long time to, to adjust to speaking more English than Spanish. So little by little, uh, I completely lost Spanish. I had to go back and relearn Spanish. So it was difficult. So I did not have the grades to go into university. Um, I had to go to Cerritos Junior College, which was a blessing. It, it taught me a few things of how to study. It taught me that there was a gave me a place to play. With that, I was able to play in the 87 Youth World Cup for the United States. But, uh, you know, it was, it was people think, no, if you go to junior college, your career's done. It's not. It's not. I played against Jeff Hooker, who played for the United States National Team, then went to UCLA. So, you know what I mean? So there, there, there's a path for everybody. And I think that's the important thing. Not everybody's path is going to be the same. Mine was not high school to a four-year college, then to professional soccer. Mine was junior college, the under 20s, and then I went to a four-year college at San Diego State. And San Diego State, I tell you what, uh, to be able to play, uh, guys, guys there were there with Kyle Whittemore, Jeff Fett. My roommate was Eric Winalda. So to have a, another player... Uh, that was on the national team that we were both kind of working together uh, was a blessing too. And then from there, you know, at the right place at the right time, um, you get chosen. The under-20s sees you from the under-20s. The 
first team sees you play a little bit and calls you in. At that time, they had a U.S. national team B team for all the young college players, which would be like the Olympic team now. And we got to play a bunch of games and all the experiences I got. But uh, I think the important thing for kids is if you do not make it to a the university you want, junior college is, is the path for everybody has to be. You know what I mean? I'm not... I'm not sitting here saying I've made it through this and that. I had to go to junior college in order to go to university in order to get to the national team, and that was my path. Yeah, and uh, you know we've we that's how we know each other is through me working at Salt Lake Community College and and yeah. continue to yeah. send me. You know, I've had six or seven of uh, Rapids boys come through my program, and and we're able to move them on, and and it's been it's been great. Um, in 2005. Yeah, let's get a couple more. Um, in 2005, when you were inducted into the Soccer Hall of Fame, um, you know, you talked a little bit about your dad and just, just I don't know, just that things for me, that would be the pinnacle of a career, you know, just to be recognized with the names that you were recognized as well. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, just leading up to that day, how special that was for you. You know, when you, when, you, when you play professional soccer at a young age, all you want to do is make money and play soccer. You know what I mean? And as you grow and you develop and you keep playing the longer you play, you, you figure out you want to leave some sort of history, some sort of impact. So when your grandkids, you know, when my kids, you know, their grandkids and their grandkids, hey, grandpa, grandpa, great grandpa was an ex-professional. So I wanted to make sure I left a legacy. I wanted to leave a mark in soccer. And uh, I've been blessed to be able I've gone through ACL, ACL surgery. I've gone through three meniscus. I've gone through an ankle. I've gone through a left side of my face was fractured and went through reconstructive surgery there. I had two sports hernia and groin surgery. So, you know, to say that, uh, that I, I was able to finish out my career, get inducted into the Hall of Fame, you know, and I couldn't have done any of that without – First of all, my mom and my dad, because they were there every day, and my brother uh, supporting me, the, my wife and my kids that were there. But to be, be inducted with guys like Tab Ramos, John Hart, Hank Steinbrecher, and my roommate and my best friend in the world, who's like a second father to me, a mentor with Fernando Clavijo, was something I'll never forget. That's awesome. Um, just two more questions for you, Cello. Um, what advice, and you, you, I feel like you've given advice, but just what advice do you have for young players, players, players looking to get into college, players looking to get a pro contract, wherever they may be, what general advice would you have for them? You know, I, I would say like anything else, they got to work hard. You got to, if you want something, you got to work hard. You can't say you want something. And you talk about it, but you're not willing to make the sacrifices for it. You know, making and playing Xbox isn't sacrificing. Going out at 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night on a Friday night when you have a midday game or 1 o'clock game, that's not sacrificing. You know what I mean? If you want something, you got to work hard. And not, listen, not everybody's path is going to be the same path. Some guys may go straight. Like here, we've got a young man in Cole Bassett that went from – my U19 team last year straight into the first team you signed a contract to another guy like Matt Hundley who went to college for a year now he's back and now he signed a professional contract so if you want something you got to work for it and it may not come right away but that doesn't mean you give up you give up I've learned that you give up when you die that's when you give up in life because you have your body gives up besides that if you want something to work hard every day don't go to the park and just kick the ball into the goal and say that's training, that's juggling, that's dribbling, that's cutting, everything at game speed. So you've got to make the sacrifices in order to get to the end result. And, and same question for coaches. Uh, you know, a coach that's just looking to advance their career, uh, I would imagine a lot of the same, lot of the same uh, answers, but what, would you do, what, what advice would you give for coaches? You know, I think that's different because we've seen in the coaching world, it is, it's really strange. You've seen guys who just retire who have been giving opportunities to coach in MLS, 
guys that just retired that have been given college jobs. So I think in the coaching world, it's a little different. You know what I mean? Um, but there's always the, the steps that you have to take, you know, uh, getting your licenses is first of all, uh, getting yourself in a good program, staying humble. I think that's always important. You, you see a lot of coaches sometimes that get the, the into that into that space where they think they know everything and there's so much to learn, you know. It, it's easy to be negative with other coaches. Oh, look at the way he's doing that drill. That's not Everybody does a drill and adapts it to the way they're comfortable doing it. Be yourself. Be confident. But get your licenses. Because without your licenses in this country, you're probably not going to get an opportunity to go anywhere. Yeah, that's big time. Uh, Chella, you have no idea how uh, much I appreciate this. Uh, I think this has been an awesome interview. Thank you for your time, and, and just I can't wait to chat with you more. Anytime, my friend. You have my number. Anytime we can chat soccer, just chat life. Okay, bro. Hey, all the best to you, man. You too, bro. All right. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Coach Mark Davis and in the Instagram, Coach Mark Davis 11. This is Soccer with Coach Mark Davis.